good, everybody? It's your girl, Tania. I am back for another podcast. This is the Breakfast Crew Podcast, where I podcast usually with Harvest, but she is too tired from our trip that we just had this weekend. So she was like, no, I don't feel like podcasting, but she's going to come out and do the joke of the day. So no fear, she will be here. I podcast from Central Texas, where it was 102 degrees, just saying, and uh, I live here with my husband and my kids. I am a nurse at the local hospital. I crochet mainly. I dabble in some knitting most of the time, and I, eh, on that spinning, almost never of the time. Um, We had a very good weekend. It is... Uh, Sunday, June 11th, (laughs) Sunday, June 11th, say it with some, mm, Tania, Sunday, June 11th, 2023, it is, I don't know, six o'clock in the afternoon, the sun is still high in the mother flipping sky, and I have really good sunlight right now, so I'm going to try to podcast and let y'all see all the great things that I got today or in the last two weeks since I last saw y'all. It, it's a lot. And I didn't intend it to be a lot, but it is what it is. Like, let's get into it. We are hoarders. It's okay. I don't, I don't mind. So I have some whips. I have almost an FO. And some stash. I will talk about what we did this weekend. I will talk about what I've been listening to, music and book wise. And so, yeah, 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 let's get into it. Um, I want to first thank people for people. Thank you, subscribers. Sorry. I mean, y'all are people, but thank you, subscribers, for coming back and seeing what your girl has to offer. There's a million other people that y'all could be watching, but I am so grateful that that y'all are here watching me. Words. Blah, blah, blah. I might have to do, so I was in chorus in middle school. Okay, now we're going to start babbling. But I was in chorus in middle school and high school. And our chorus teacher used to warm up our our mouths and our the jaws and all that good stuff by singing this song, The Lips, The Teeth, The Tip of the Tongue. And we had to say it like three or four times. And we had to say it faster every time. And at the end, we would go the tip of the tip of the tip of the tongue. So I should probably do that when I start this. I digress. So let's see, we have no FOs, but I do have, sorry, an eyelash bothering me, a whip, two whips. So I've been trying to make this yarn into something for a while, since like January, and it's finally became something and I'm so happy. So this is called the Virus Poncho. I started it the last time I podcast, And it's gotten some good work on it. So this is the four color fade by Chicken Coop Dye Works. She did for her Kwanzaa box. That's the first color. Here is the second color. Or that's the second color. The third color is right here. And then I'm on my fourth color right now, which is this beautiful dark blue purple color. And it's called... Bomb Cyclone. I think that's Bomb Cyclone. Polar Plunge. Ice Fort. No, I don't think that's Bomb Cyclone. That is... I don't know. We'll go with that. I don't know. Uh, I might have to link to the Kwanzaa video where I showed maybe all of them at once so that y'all can see what color is what because... I don't think I took a picture. I don't know. But anyway, it's a poncho. So the virus shawl that, I don't know. I love the virus shawl. It's a very basic shawl. And it's a four row repeat. And it's, I'm back up a little here. And I'm also going to do a little squat. Work them knees, Tia. Work them knees. So here is my poncho back same way it has two corners this is a corner the back's a corner 
I did the top part on a four, and when I got down to the fourth color, I got on a five. I am holding the yarn double because this was like 400 and something yard, 430, four something. And it was a lot of yarn and a single ply. So now that I'm holding it double, it gives it a little bit more strength. So I should be able to tug on it and whatever. So I'm liking this. I literally, this is all I want to work on. This is going to be like a crochet heavy podcast, like mainly crochet podcast anyway, but this is crochet heavy podcast. And I love this thing. It just like my stripes of joy. This brought me so much joy. It's ridiculous. I'm going to bring it a little closer because that sun is blowing it out. But it's bringing me so much joy. It's ridiculous. And these colors are working out together amazingly. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I have that going. And I literally just have this much left. So, I could probably watch a show and get it done. My second whip is my baby blanket for my doctor friend. Which I'm actually, I would say I'm, I'm close to being done. I'm pretty close to being done. Like, I bought three balls originally, and I bought an extra ball thinking, oh, it's not going to be enough. This is how much I have left of ball three. I have this much left, and I can come back again. I have this much left. Take it out. This much. That's all I got left. Way to go, T. Either way. And this is where I'm at. And I'm doing this on a five and a half crochet furrow hook. Because I love furrows. If I could, I wish furrows, because it's here in Austin, I wish they would like have open house. So people who enjoy their products can come and buy their products directly from them ex in, instead of having to wait for shipping. I mean, I don't mind going to a yarn store or buying from the website, but... Like, you're here in Austin. You're flipping local. Mm -hmm. But this is my blanket. Mm -hmm. So, this is the width. And, the, no. What the? F blah, blah, blah. Okay, length. Length check. Right? So, it's long enough. I think it's wide enough. Both ways. Right? So, that little bit. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll use half of the other ball and go from there. But that's the granny, granny spike square blanket. Sure. We're going to go with it. It's in my By the Bay bag co bag, y'all. I don't, I don't think I need to like endorse her bag, but I'm endorsing this bag. This red is on point. It is super cute. This is her large medium i think this is a medium medium red if it's my blanket it has three balls of that mandala um, yarn in it it got one now my crochet hook i didn't need no stitch marker so i didn't have any but if y'all saw her large one pff, bro you'd be like tania what's her address i put it in i put everything in the show notes Oh, as to say, if anything I talk about you want to know is always in the show notes. Usually my patterns go to Ravelry, but um, I'm going to start linking the websites to the person, the designer, because I'm pretty sure now that Ravelry is like not accessible for everybody. Everybody, most everybody is getting a website. So it'll be on the website. Maybe. It will be in my show notes, though. So whip I started that y'all did not see. It's giving me like the feels. I I'm getting the feels. So it's in my Black Pearl Magic bag. It's the Creepy Valentine bag. I bought the Creepy Valentine box. It came with Fashion School Dropout yarn and some candles by Black Pearl Magic Sister and who else? The hubby's in Waco. He's driving home from Dallas. Anyways, and some acrylic buttons by Ken. Uh, I mean, not by Ken. His name isn't Ken. What's his name? 
I don't know. But he had Ken's yarn. And, you know, Ken's yarn's going out of business. But he's going to still do buttons. Acrylic buttons in, in, I think, stitch markers, maybe? I don't know. I had some stitch markers by Twin Mountain Designs, I believe it is. Let's get into it. So, this is called the Sound Wave Shawl by Stephanie Aaron. Not my ears. Sound Wave Shawl. So, it's a... Literally, it's a wave shawl, and it has mohair in the middle and finger and weight. And I got we, me and Sarah, my friend Sarah, got the box, and we wanted to find a pattern to do together. So we found this pattern, and we're gonna knock it out the park, y'all, because I've even got yarn to do another one. Oh yeah! So. This is the yarn. The yarn is BT Breeze Fibers, which is the yarn I got last time. It's her mold cider. And then I got Fashion School Dropouts and the color My Creepy Valentine. And it was a Bolse, a Bolse, I always do that, a Boucle twin set. It was boucle, 240 yards of boucle, and then 7th Avenue Surrey Silk. So Baby Silk and Alpaca, and Baby Surrey Alpaca and 26% Silk. So here is the, every time I say fashion school dropout, I think of Grease and um, when, what was her name? Mm, the one that dropped out of high school and went to beauty school. And they sang, beauty school dropout, no graduation day for you, beauty school dropout, you flunk something in funk shampoo, <laughs> whatever. So that is the creepy valentine color. This is the boucle creepy valentine color. And this is the mold cider. That's actually showing up pretty perfect. It's this wonderful. So here's my progress. I'm using a size four hook. And this hook was bought by a friend of mine on Instagram. Um, she bought this for my graduation from nursing school and I appreciate it so much. Thank you, ma'am. She lives in upstate New York-ish, I think, yeah. And I met her for the very first time IRL at Rhinebeck last year, and I was so, so stinking excited about it. So here is what I got. Oh, y'all, what? Get your life together. Yes, what? Okay. So, here's what I'm, here's what your girl is doing, because yo, I am feeling all of this, all of it. So here's what I'm doing. The pattern I'm not going to give away too much, but the pattern is you have to do two rows of fingering in a row of mohair. Literally, the easiest damn pattern I've ever had in my entire life. So with that, I did the first two rows in the mold cider. I did two rows. No, I did. The, I did the first two rows in mold cider, mohair, and then I switched to the boucle. And then we went back to mohair, and then I did a two-row repeat of the fingering weights, and then I'm going back to the boucle. So here's why. So I was going to originally do it like how, almost like how Sarah did hers, which I can't remember right now how she did hers, but she started with the fingering and then did the alpaca, the Surrey alpaca, and then did the boucle. And then the Surrey alpaca and then the fingering, Surrey alpaca, boucle. Yeah. So I decided to do it this way because I have 437 yards, I believe, of the fingering weight. I have almost doubled the fingering weight than I do the boucle. 
So I'm doing the boucle, boucle in less rounds because I have less of it. And I'm doing the fingering in more rounds because I have more of it. So hopefully I get to a point where when I get to the end, it would just be the fingering weight. That's it. And the Surrey Alpaca. I don't know why. I, I sound weird saying Alpaca. Right? I don't know. Anyways. So, because <laughs> I'm saying Alpaca, Alpaca. I don't know. Whatever. I digress. Y'all. Hmm. Let me see if I can get this Kupima screenshot. Okay. We'll see. Uh, okay. That Yo, that's all my lips. I have like two knitting projects I haven't even touched because I'm not feeling it. And then remember how I said I was... <laughs> debating on doing the tessellation tee where I bought the pattern. And as a group, we decided to not do the tessellation tee. Let me tell you why. Because these doggone single do the back loops. I'm not. This is why I'm not. I'm trudging through my Libra top, my Libra pullover, because you have to single through the back loop. And I'm using fingering. And the pattern calls for sport. So I'm already doing the dumb shit. Right? I don't want to do that anymore. No so, I said, I don't want to do that pattern. And Sarah was like, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. And I was like, Sarah, I refuse. I refuse to knit or make something that make, doesn't bring me joy. At this point, I am not a process crocheter. I am a product crocheter. I want the damn product. And I won't get the damn product if I have to single through the back loop. So, we're switching. I think we're doing the stripey parvum, the stripey parvum top by Nomad Stitches. It's a pullover. You have to single through the back loop for your ribbing, just for your neck ribbing. And maybe your ribbing on your sleeve. But that's it. The whole the whole top is in single through the back loop. Hmm. So I think I have enough yarn. I have four skeins of that radioactive yarn. I'm still going to use it. And I'm going to do the brown yarn because it's just like maybe a two row, two row stripe, I think. I'll put a picture up of what it looks like. It's a pretty pattern and it's a pretty pattern. So I think I can do it. No, not I think. I know I can do it. And I will do it. No apples, remember? So let's get to, oh God, stash. Because I literally just did a pat, pick, uh, words, pattern adjacent. So, stash. So I won a giveaway, two, two. I won two giveaways, y'all. Your girl is on a roll. So I won two giveaways. The first one was by Treehouse Knits. She's in Austin. She's semi-loco. I'm trying to think of her name off the top of my head, but I'll put it down here. Um, she's going to be at DFW Fiber Fest. I was trying to like boost her up and I'll be like, yeah, go to Houston, go to Houston. But I don't think she made it in time, but she will be at DFW. So I'm excited. I get to see her stuff in person, but she had this fade. She had this yarn collection that came out in May, April, May-ish, called the Riverdale Collection. She did it off of the show. I've never seen that show. I don't know what that show about. I don't know nothing about that show. Mm. But she had this fade. And this fade was the Shiznits. And I was like, well, damn. Guess I got to get the fade. So here's the fade. Um, and I got it on Sport. It's, oh, no, wait, hold on, pause. And we're back. I have to fix the lighting a little bit. So here's the fade. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's Pops Chicken Lit Shop. Um, the one and only. And I think it goes into this one, which is Babylonium. Why 
watch me now. Oh my goodness. Babylonian. And then I think is Le, Le Bonnut. Mm, again, I've never seen this show. And then the last one is The Midnight Children, I think. I took a picture of them, and I will put a picture up here as I'm holding this. Um, it's, I couldn't, I couldn't pass, I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't pass it up. And so I didn't pass it up. So then it took her like, oh God, like six weeks, six, maybe seven weeks to get it out to me. I ordered it in March on the 26th. I don't know why I know this date, but I know this date. I ordered it on March 26th. I didn't get it in the mail until the end of May. So that's a good two months that I didn't have the yarn and I started to get worried. But when I had ordered it, it said some something about 12 to 14 weeks. And I was like, really, it's gonna take that long? Cause I thought it was already like made because I'm in her discord and people are like, in the end of April, they're like, oh, I got my collection and blah, blah. And I was like, well, where's mine? <laughs> And then in between that, she had a giveaway for an attenny a tinny bag. That's how you pronounce it, a tinny. So she sent me a message and was like, "Hey, you win this a tinny bag, and you get to pick eight skeins of whatever yarn you want and whatever color you want." You ain't said nothing about the word, girl. So I got on her website and I picked out. This is called something about snow. You belong here. I lie. <laughs> okay. Um, it's on Tweed DK and it's 85% uh, words. Jesus. 85% wool and 15% donical nips. You belong here. Tweed DK. Where did I get snow from? I don't know. Maybe her inspiration photo was snow. Who knows? But this is the bag I won. How cute is this bag? It's a tinny. I follow her on Instagram now because of the giveaway. And she even commented on my po uh, picture about my post about not going to Atlanta Carnival over Memorial Day weekend. And she was like, can I come with you? Oh, uh, girl, yeah. Girl, yeah. Like, get, let's get into the vibes. We have to have a vibe check. We're going to get you right, gal. We're going to get you right. Get you ready to go. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to worry. You you with the best. You with the feta of all fetas. That's partier of all partiers for non-Caribbean speaking people. <laughs> so that's what I won. And I was so excited. So that came. And then my husband... Works at an Army Reserve Station down in Austin. And often they have crafts for the soldiers to do. Crafting is a big part of PTSD therapy, PTSD therapy. And so uh, he said one of the ladies there stopped him and was like, hey, we have some yarn. Of course y'all do. And so he grabbed a bag or four. So two of them are the same. So these have a project in it with knitting needles. This, you're right? Yeah. And this has a project in it with crochet hooks. So uh, you can crochet or you can knit. So what I'm thinking, I'm going to take my knitting machine. And if this is enough yarn, it's four ounces, 64 yards. So it's probably not. So I'll probably have to use two of them. But I'm going to take... Um, this one is 170 yards, so that's, that might actually be enough for a hat. But I'm going to knit, machine knit some hats, and I'm going to just send it to them to work and be like, here, here's the yarn that my wife, that, you know, y'all gave my wife, and she turned into a hat. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, Happy New Year. And then, y'all. So, you know, having friends in different states are amazing. Having friends with like um, hobbies and are willing to enable you 
even more amazing. I was gonna say not so, but even more amazing, right? So my homegirl, Sarah, third time I now mention her name on this podcast. She lives in Rhode Island and her local yarn store, Skein Yarn Shop, had a trunk show with junk yarn. I think their name is Kemper. Kemper, that sounds right. Kemper of junk yarn. And Kitty with a Cupcake. That's her Instagram handle, but I don't know her name. Hmm. I'll find out. Either way, I needed some things. She had a 90s theme trunk show. So my package came in the mail. Prinkle, prinkle. I apologize. Package came in the mail. I got not one, but two bouquet. This is a gray base bouquet, bouquet though. And I love it so much. And the bouquet, working with the bouquet right now is giving me the fits. But because I'm crocheting it, it's different. This is this is the second time I've crocheted bouquet. And I forgot what it was like. And now I'm like, I don't like crocheting with bouquet. I will knit this bouquet. I'll take a better picture of it. I'm, I apologize for the lighting. It's pretty shitty. But we in Texas, we all know things just be happening randomly in Texas. So I got some Crocs charms, some gibbets that says yarn. Love them. Of course, it's, of course it's purple, right? And then I got an enamel pin of a Tamagotchi because who didn't have a Tamagotchi when they were a kid? Because I had one. And mine was yellow, I think. And I forgot, I forgot to make. My thing used to die though, like no joke. And then I got some yarn balls, some lever back, lever back, lever back, lever back yarn balls. Stinking cute. All different colors. Pink, purple, yellow, orange, green. And, oh, and I got a, oh, this is a sticker. A sticker. And a pin. Yay. I like pins. So that's what I got. Oh, I'm so excited. So that was more sash, right? I have to categorize these. I have to put them in Ravelry. I have to do something. So then I won my second giveaway. My second giveaway was to knit or crochet every day in May for um, West 7th Wool, which is a yarn store in uh, Fort Worth. And they are literally on West 7th Street in Fort Worth. Which makes sense. Um, they have their own in-house yarn. And at the beginning of the store, it starts from the light yarn going toward the back because your bulky yarn. And then in the back back, you got your sale yarn. And then on the right hand side, they were able to uh, bust the wall wide open, y'all. They bust it wide open and put an in-house dye studio. And I believe the owner husband, who is an owner, so the husband and wife team is dyeing the yarn. And man, he was so kind enough to let me take a impromptu dye studio tour. So I'm gonna put that right here. Okay. Okay, so this is the dye studio. It used to be about a mile down the road, which was oh. you know, it was nice, but it's not as nice as being on site. When our neighbor yeah. moved out, we were like, can we... I heard y'all expand. expand, yeah. Yeah, and that's precisely what we did. Knocked down a few walls, and it turned out to be perfect for our needs. We moved our giant sink from down the street over uh -huh. here. Nice. And these are all the pots and pans I used to dye. I mostly use the pans, of course, the pots. These are the cooktop burners I'll use when I'm cooking on cooktops. So okay. We'll turn them off with the pans. Okay. Um, the dye that we use come from three different manufacturers, Dharma. Okay, I've heard of it. Prochem, and then Ashford, which they do a lot of uh, looms and that kind of thing as well. Okay. Uh, out of New Zealand. Okay. Um, this is our mixing table over here. Nice. We'll mix dye into these measuring cups. Okay. We use these old containers if I'm doing speckling. 
Um, once everything's mixed up and I'm good to go for the day, I'll load up the cart. And okay. Wheel it in through here. That's my to do list. To do list. Um, I don't see any spicy. I'll have to add it on. Okay. There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> now, if I'm um, doing more variegated yarn, uh -huh. if I'm doing more speckled yarn, then I'll do it on the cooktop. I'll line up all my burners over on these tables and we'll get going that way. If I'm doing more of a tonal or a solid, then I can basically load up the pans, shove them in the warming cabinets, wow. and then just leave them in there for two to four hours, depending on what I've the I've only is. ever seen these on Instagram. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, this is this is that a is so the cool. Um, we have recipes for everything that we do, so that we can replicate everything as precisely. Sure. As we can. With that said, we also have our library over here. Of nice. All the colors. Sometimes you just want that visual reference as well. Um, oh, that orange in that corner is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, all the yarn that we order when it comes in, it looks like this shrink wrapped. Mm -hmm. When it's about time to use it, we'll run prep, which means we'll add additional ties and these uh, rings yes. to manipulate the yarn in the pan. Or Who knew not. simple shower rings would be so... Oh, exactly. And the, the great thing about this, oftentimes you watch videos of people dyeing yarn and they'll use zip ties, yeah. which is fine. But I mean, then you have to throw them away. These yeah. are reusable. Yeah. Um, and then oftentimes, like, you know, when you're winding yarn and it's on the swift and you got the... That's because oftentimes things can cross about three to four hours in the dryer and it'll be dry and they'll be like this. Okay. Then once we're done with that, we can remove those extra ties, uh -huh. skein it and label it and nice. then it's it at the floor. One of the questions you got a sweet job. <laughs> yes. One of the questions I get a lot is how long does all of that actually That take? process, yeah. I'll come in in the morning and mix dye. I should have some idea what my to-do list is for mm -hmm. the day. Uh, by the time I leave in the afternoon, it should be at some point in the drying process. Okay. And then day two is skein and label. So the dye process itself is one day, but okay. from start to finish, ready to hit the floor, more like a day and a half to two days. That's not bad, not actually. Bad. That's not a bad turnaround. Yep. For but that was the coolest thing ever. So I got... I got... Their hand dye yarn, West Seventh Wool, and I got it in color Trinity River, and this is their Hunter Sock, seventy thirty, four hundred thirty seven yard yards, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty color. Oh, so then I and then I got some. Uh, Mar Mason Dixon Knitting Field Guides. I, I have no idea what these are. But um, they, they have all different titles. You have Fair Isle. You have Wanderlust. Let's see if I can read this backwards. Grace, right? Oh, look at your girl. And then you have, I don't know, Marls. So they they're cute little books, booklets. You got patterns in them. Marlogram scarf. Oh, look, this is a Marl scarf. Okay. <clears throat> so you, one, two, three. So this design was by Cecilia Campochiro. Mm, I'm sorry, girl, I don't butcher that. The designs in the Grace is by Hohi Locatelli. The design in Wonderlust is by Wendy Bernard. And you have designs in the Fair Eye by three different people. V Veronique, Avery, Anne Bud, and Michelle Rose Ordine. So, that's cool. Yay, interesting. So then, of course, you can't go to somebody's store and not buy something so i went to their wall and saw this amazing one of a kind dyed fingering weights this is what got me this right here and then this oh y'all see that yo this right here this right here this right here make your mama sing this right here What? And then I saw some like nice pink um, uh, Surrey alpaca to go with it. 
again. So I've, I saw, sorry about that. I saw two, yes, two patterns that they had on display. Something called the Blanche Two Top and a Koi Tee. The Blanche Two was done in DK weight and the Koi Tee was in Hunter Sock. My handwriting sucks. But I'm thinking I'm going to do the Koi Top in this. So I won't need a mohair, but I'm going to do the Koi Top in this. Hopefully I have enough. If not, I think I might be able to um, border a different color. But that's my plan for that. So then I took a drive, a 30 something minute drive, because I didn't feel like paying tolls to Grapevine. Grapevine, Texas is where Great Wolf Lodge is, it's where Lego Land is. Who else is in Grapevine? They have some, something else. They got a lot of other stuff there, but they got some, oh, they got an amazing mall, which I went to that too, called Grapevine Mills. Um, but I went to On The Lamb Yarn Store, and they had Sam, a beachy, Beachy Breeze Fibers there. I was going to say Beachy Fibers. Beachy Breeze Fibers. She's from Connecticut. I, I've i known Sam for a while now. At least two and a half years now. I did her um, flower. I think it was a flower subscription. She had like a monthly flower subscription last year. Was it last year? I think it, I think it was. I think it was last year. And I think I went from January to... May or January to June or something like that. And then I bought a, excuse me, I bought a advent calendar from her the year before. And I did a crochet shawl out of, is it the Just Feel Cozy shawl or just, I, I'll take a picture of it. I'll show y'all. Or I have a picture of it, I'll pop it in. So she was there. Was she there? So I had to FaceTime Sarah because Sarah FaceTimed me. She was like, can you FaceTime me? No, actually, she was like, you better FaceTime me. I mean, I FaceTimed her, so you don't scare me. Whatever. So, <laughs> so I got her some sparkle yarn. She wants the sparkle. The girl wants the sparkle. Sparkle girl. So I got her some sparkle yarn. And some two very pretty pinky purple yarn, but not too Barbie pink, but not like black pink. It's like the right amount of pink purple stuff going on. I didn't take a picture of her stuff, but because one of the sets of yarn she bought, I bought, and we're going to match, I have it with me. So it's called Deep Space. And boy... See, this is showing up black. Even kind of in person, it's showing up black. But it's like a navy blue black. I, I didn't know how I was supposed to say that. Navy blue black. It's so pretty. It's ridiculous. And mine's on Sparkle. This is her Boardwalk sock. Um, this is her 75, 25, 463 yards per 100 grams. And then I got Shooting Star, which does Sparkle. Oh, yep. See, it's right there. Mm, mm, mm. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Mm, mm. Okay, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Crystal fingering is what this base is called. And this is Shooting Star on her 7525 Silver Stellina. Y'all know, I was trying to spell Stellina yesterday, and for, for the life of me, I couldn't. So I, I just said sparkle. Whatever. I'm allowed to have non-thinking moments. That was definitely a non-thinking moment. This is 438 yards. <laughs> so what are you, what are we making? What are we making? What are we making? We don't know. We don't know yet. We saw some crop tops by Nomad Stitches. It's a possibility. She has a, a crop top where she has like a lace yoke thing going on, which could be the shooting star. And then the rest of the pattern will be in the deep space. And then I might just border my top. Sorry, I lost train of thought. I might just do my neckline and my <clears throat> shoulder trim and my uh, border on the end with this if I have enough left over. 
but mine's will probably be cropped and I'm okay with that. I, I get down with a crop. Um, I wear high-waisted jeans a lot. Um, I wear high-waisted skirts too. And your girl get down with a crop, so it's okay. Mm. Because I have a shirt that says, um, no, is it no honey, you're mm, no honey, you're skinnier than me, not prettier. Cause your girl cute. Period. So I got that. And then I got her <clears throat> Specific color for On The Lamb yarn store. So On The on the Lamb loves per, like her logo or her store colorway or whatever for any yarn dyer for her is a purple something. So I got this. This got some purple with a little bit of green in it, like a mossy green. And um, it's on her bull walk two-step. This is a different one. This is softer. The most cider that I have for the Soundwave shawl is this base. And I love it. It's 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. So it's an 80-20 with a high twist. Oh, some news thing just came across. Sorry. 80% with a, a two-ply high twist. And it is so soft. It's 437 yards. Her boardwalk is like 460. Well, I have it right here. What am I doing? 400. Her boardwalk is 463 yards. And her um, two-ply is 437 yards. So I lose, give or take, 20-something yards. But that's okay. Yeah, 20-something yards. So then I'm going to pair it with this lavender surrey. I got Surrey instead of mohair because I don't really like mohair. But so I got this lavender Surrey and this, my color is not doing it justice. My lighting is not doing it justice. So I apologize. But this is Lilac Blossoms and this is our 7426 lace weight, 328 per 50 grams. So I have over 600. Uh, actually, I got 656. 656 yards of lace weight. Y'all yo, like how y'all girl just did that math like that? Wah! That don't happen every day. Take it. Just take it. As P. Diddy say, take that. Take that. So I'm excited about this because this is going to probably be another sound wave, y'all. And this one might be bigger than the one that I got. So you might see two sound wave shawls from me going to run back this year. Just saying. So all the yarny stuff. That was all the yarny purchases this weekend. I've been craving. Sorry, let me get this in the bag. Because I don't want to have to try to talk and try to figure out how to edit this stuff out. Okay. So I've been craving a Vera Bradley travel bag. Um I've been wanting one since Shoot, I don't know, 2016 maybe, 20, 2017 maybe. And I finally got one. So they have a Vera Bradley outlet store in Grapevine. So I took a 10 minute trek down the street from On The Lamb and um, got me a bag. Sorry. This was, yeah. I didn't call you, 70% off. I didn't call you. Dang it, then I heard my name. Yeah, no, no, no. You're good. That's cute though. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. So this was 70% off. This is her um it's a I'm gonna tell you what it is. The wallet crossbody. So it should come with so the hooks are right here. Where is my, hmm, maybe not. I, I think I was supposed to get a, oh, I was. I was supposed to get the thingamajiggy, the, the handle. Why, 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 I don't know. And I didn't, hmm, I might have to go back up to Grapevine and let them know I didn't get it. But it was 70% off, so who knows if they're even gonna have it. 
it's okay. I'll just, I can carry it like this or I can carry it like this. So it's all right. It, it works. Whatever. I don't care. I just had to have it because it's purple. It's cute. And it can fit my cell phone. And then I got this little cute little, oh, why is it so cute? It's a poke. Uh, sorry. I, I'm i about to be geeky real quick. It's a pill case. Meaning you put your pills in them. We don't say pill. We say po. You took your pill today? No, you took your pill today? No, that don't even sound right. Anyways, this was 10 bucks. It's originally 29 You see that? $29. It's originally $29. And in the outlet store, it's $10. So in the outlet store, you can get 50% off because they're outlet. And they normally take off a little bit something extra, she said. And this weekend, they were taking 20% off of your um 50%. So she said you really get like 62%. So if your bag is $100, they take 50% off the $100. So now you're left with $50. And then they take 20% off of that $50. So now you're paying... 20 30 something dollars for the bag okay i'll take that so they were having a final clearance sale for their large travel bags on certain prints and the prints were 39 dollars. the solids were 49 dollars. so i got a print i got this print actually and i'm stinking excited about it because i've been wanting a very very proudly bag for a long time so here's my bag and it's going to be like my duffel bag when I go to wherever I go. And I was told it, I saw it all like, just look at the print. I saw it like filled with certain things like, you know, tissue and whatever. And it was a pretty decent size, you know. I wanted the extra large duffel bag, but y'all, when I tell y'all I was so torn, I didn't know what the hell to buy. I I ended up asking Harvest, like, should I get this print or that print? And then I was like, okay, should I get that print or this print? Because if she chose that, then I pull up another print and was like, okay, so this or that. And so she finally said it on this one. So this one I got, because, you know, this I love this. It's purple. It's gray. You know, we got some neutral moody colors going on. And, you know, sometimes, you know, your girl can be a little moody. But it's always some purple. So that's how that goes. So I'm excited about this purchase. I might eBay an extra large duffel bag. And, you know, see what I get. And it'll go from there. But that's about it. So that's all my... That's all my purchases. Sorry, I see a headband. So real quick, what I'm listening to? I'm listening to the fifth book of the the Crave series by Tracy Wolf. It's called Charm. This is the Hudson and the what a girl name is Grace. That's her name. <laughs> this is the Hudson and Grace story. So in the book, right, she finds out she's a gargoyle, but. Was it the end of the last book? I mean, the end of the first book, which the first book is called Crave. I think the end of that book, she disappeared for like a year or something. And she disappeared under by turning into a stone. Nobody knew she was, um, what do they call them? Not immortal. Um, anyway, nobody knew she had powers because her mom and dad were human. Kind of find out her dad was a warlock. Like her uncle, who was running the academy that she's attending, but her dad and her mom got killed. And her mom, I believe, was human. And um, something of the story she was told that her dad powers got taken from him because he married a human. In actuality, I think he married a witch. So I think the mom was a witch and the dad was a warlock. Something like that. And um, anyway, they died. And they died because... They have two two witches. Um, one's a good witch and one's a bad witch. And the bad witch had raised this vampire who is the second son of the vampire king. And either ways, I, I don't want to get too much in that story. She tries to save him at the end of the book from his brother who's apparently like the sadistic crazy vampire killer. And I'm going to turn this way because that light is doing some things. Anyway. Uh, crazy vampire killer person 
who him and his girlfriend were basically trying to kill off certain people so they can like rule the world or something. In actuality, she was trying to do that. He was trying to stop her from doing it. And he got caught up and got put into some kind of like lair or something. Well, either way, Grace turned into a gargoyle trying to save him from getting out, trying to stop him from getting out. And they got trapped together. And so she lived with him in her in her head for like, I guess, two years at this point, maybe a year. I don't know. She missed a good bit of her high school. I think it was actually four months in our time, but it it was longer in their time. I don't remember. Sorry. Either way. So now this is the story of what happened when she got stuck in her gargoyle form and found Hudson. It's almost like Twilight again. I hope they, I hope when they turn this into a movie, if they turn this into a movie, I hope that they pick good characters because I, I couldn't even watch Twilight after I saw the first one and I read the book. I couldn't even watch it anymore because my thoughts of Edward was was not what they portrayed on screen. So I was like, screw it, I'm not watching. So I, I don't know what Eclipse looked like. I don't know what Breaking Dawn looked like. I don't know what none of the rest of them book looked like, but I know what that book looked like up here. And Edward did not look like that. Oh, and in this book, the freaking vampires don't glow in the sun. Just FYI, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. So anyways, we went up to Dallas for the weekend. So my husband is in the Army Reserves. He also works for the Army full-time. So this weekend was his weekend to do drill. And I had the weekend off. So we went up to Dallas. And we, since I had to go get my prize, we decided to make it a weekend trip. So we made it a weekend trip. I took the little peoples with us. And it was fun. Uh, we went to a impromptu Comic-Con. Um, we went to... I was wanting to go to... They have an art district called Deep Ellum. I wanted to go there, but it was so flipping hot, y'all. Plus, the two little kids was not handling it very well. Because they don't really get out. So, they, they weren't handling being out very well. So, I had to kind of lay down the law a few times. And I was just exhausted by laying down. I was just like, okay, I got to get y'all back to y'all mama. Because right now, I, I don't feel y'all no more. I love y'all death, but y'all got to go. Period. Uh, what else we did? Um, we went to some restaurant called Portillo's, which is, which is a Chicago staple. Apparently, they do Chicago dogs and Italian sandwiches and stuff like that. Yeah, no. We waited for two hours to get our food. We got rained on in the process, and then our food was cold. And, it, and we drove 45 minutes to get there. <sighs> Needless to say, I was not a happy camper. That was Friday, Saturday night. And then, what do we do today? We went to the Comic-Con today, so that was fun. So much walking. I think I clocked like 19,000 steps. Almost 20,000 steps today. It was amazing. I loved it. Harvest, you ready for your joke of the day? Yeah. Come on, girl. Okay, she said this time it's a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Knock-knock. Oh, who's that? Start the Wait, start the Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Chicken. Chicken who? You, you, you silly chicken. Owls who? Chicken's cluck. Girl, go away. That's that's cute. You silly chicken's <laughs> cluck. Owls who? It worked. Yeah, it worked. Was it funny though? Yes. Oh, okay. Anyways. I'll see y'all later. Y'all be grateful. The sun is shining. Be nice when you need to. If you don't have to be nice, then don't be nice. But be nice. Be a straight shooter. T tell them what's on your mind. Because you know what I say? Close mouths, don't get fed. Peace out, Girl Scout.
OMG, y'all. I forgot to tell y'all about the music I was listening to on the way back from Dallas. So, I heard an NSYNC song on Sirius XM, and I was like, I love that No Strings Attached album. So, your girl was jamming to No Strings Attached every single word. Y'all couldn't tell me I didn't know the words to that damn song. Any of them. From front to back. I skipped one song because I didn't really like it. It was This I Promise You. It's a slow song. It's a nice song. I just don't like it. No, I just I just wasn't feeling it. Anyway, so then I was like, well, let me go to my Justin Timberlake album because I don't know if y'all know, but Justin Timberlake is my future husband. I mean, it's kismet. Like, we both born January 31st. He was born 1982. 1981. I should probably know the year he was born. I know we're two years apart. So maybe he was born in 81 and your girl was born in 83. Both, we both 80s babies. We both from the South because homeboy from Tennessee because you know I know where he's from. And then, of course, I'm from South, South Carolina. So I was supposed to be his wife. But anyways, I digress. I like Jessica. She can keep him. Back to what I was saying. <laughs> I love his Justified album. That was the very first album he came out with. My husband bought me Future Sex Love Song when I was pregnant with Harvest as a Mother's Day gift. Oh my God. It was so great. And I I don't know. I just, I just love Justin Timberlake. So I'm listening to Justified and I'm listening to like, I feel all the memories. I can see me driving my little putt-putt to college, going to learn some lessons about, you know, the world, and trying to get into the nursing program, all the while having a little two-foot, well, actually, he was probably three-foot, because the boy was two-foot coming out of me. But anyways, um, yeah, life was simpler it was simpler. It was stressful. I struggled, y'all. Single parent in the South with minimum wage job, going to school full time. I struggled, but it was simple. And now life is stressful, but it's a little complicated. But I, I, I look forward to going back to simplicity. Either way, bye, y'all. <laughs>